and I would go up, I would buzz in, it'd be a nice apartment, and I would go up and, and we would work out of her apartment, and then she would just tell me to do things she had no idea how to do. She'd be like, make a reel, pull things off this website. Um, I want you to take all these things for this client, and I want you to edit them together. Well, what software do you want me to use? That's why I have you. She's not, think it, she's not even paying me. I came to New York to work for free for her, right? Um, and I told the professor who got me that job, um, I said, you should, never, you should never send another student to work for this woman. And you know what they're going to say to you always? What? If you don't like it, you can leave. You don't have to be here in LA. You don't have to pursue this. There's a ton of jobs. Huh? Are you in LA? Yeah. I lived in LA for two years. Dan, you lived in New York, LA, and now in Boston? Yeah. Boston, Yeah. Um, I've had, I've encountered, you know, people everywhere. Some are good, some are bad. I mean, LA is uniquely, for me, it just wasn't, I, I don't, <sighs> It's amazing. I don't like that city at all. It's ugly. It's sprawling. It's, <laughs> it's the weather's always the same. Some people love that. It's not my cup of tea. The people, like I was talking about, that pattern of behavior is not uncommon. LA? Um, yeah, stabbing yeah. each other in the back. And it's all, everyone there is trying to get in the entertainment industry. Everyone's an actor. People waiting tables are, everyone is trying to get in. And it's, and it's, um, it's that's the way the city, run, the city runs. I'll give you another story. So my boss was <laughs> I was an assistant, and he, we was look, he was looking at a screenplay, a client was writing, and the, the character in the screenplay, the arc, as they became more successful, they started in L.A., and they ended up in, like, New Jersey or somewhere, some other state, Boston, wherever. And he goes, this doesn't make any sense, because as they improve in life, they would come to L.A. They would end up in L.A. Why, like, why are they start? You don't start the character. L.A. should be the final destination. That was his mentality. And I was just thinking, wow, I remember that moment. Um, I was thinking... What? It's so, but to them it's a status symbol, it's a status thing. Yeah, it's, a it's big, like everything, like, all the movie stuff happens in LA. No, a lot of it's definitely happening in Massachusetts. Yeah. It more is, and more in Massachusetts. Georgia. Georgia is a capital. Everyone I went to school, not everyone I went to school with, the majority are either in Atlanta, which is a hub, New York, or LA. Most um, are in LA. How much of like the, how much of the like directing, the production, is done in not the production because I know a lot of the filming is done in Georgia, right? Yeah. Um, but what about like the writing and the editing and all that stuff? Is that stuff LA. done in LA? Yeah, the so. development is happening in LA. So the studio system is in LA. The deals are being made in LA. Mm -hmm. The development, the writing, writers live usually in LA. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about that. But then once they go into production, they will go to Atlanta and then they're in production. So the people in Atlanta are working in production. They're moving from movie to movie. So you've got to think about job security. So you work for three months, 12 hours a day, six days a week, boom, boom, boom. And then you might not work for six months or a few months or you might go on to the next picture, but that's their lifestyle, right? They're only working in production. So, you, so there's these different facets. If you're, but then if you get into like as an agency or as an, an executive, you're in the studio system, you're in that world in LA where the deals are being created. If you want to be a writer for television, agents will tell you, point blank. If you're not in New York or LA, pretty much LA, then you're never going to be a writer for television. Like we won't they won't represent someone who's not in LA because they can't go take the meetings. Um, we did have clients that did not, only the, the highest level clients, like who had usually, usually written books or were at that level. There's very few writers that are at that level where they, could, they, are, they can live in like Massachusetts or another state because they can afford to, where they don't have to go to these deals, the deals come to them. Um, there's very few of those kind of authors, though. We did represent a few, but there, all, all our clients were based in LA. Um, but that's a good question. That is a good question. So you have to decide what type, what part of the business do you want to go into. And you've got to think about what that lifestyle is like. And it's rough working six hours a day, even if it's on the Hunger Games. No. Um, no, no time, man. And it's great when you're young in your 20s. That's the time to do it. You know, I'm glad I, I'm I'm glad I got it out of my system and I had I went through these things. Otherwise, you won't. You never know. 
um, what it's like. But you got to think about what happiness is as well. Uh, like these people that are chasing status in LA and things, um, they're some of the most miserable people I've ever seen as well. Like the woman I worked for in New York, she lives alone, she's old, she's, she's powerful, she's, she's going to die alone, she's miserable, she's going to get think about what happiness is. She's rich, but she, I'd rather be long term. And she was working out of her apartment. I would, I mean, she had a nice apartment. It was like, you yeah, know, where you worked? yeah, I worked. I would go to her apartment. I was, I was renting an NYU dorm with no AC, working for free. And then I would go show up in her apartment. She said, I, I told you to come at three, not two forty-five. Well, I was always trained to show up early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I would go up. I would buzz in. It'd be a nice apartment, and I would go up and and we would work out of her apartment. And then she would just tell me to do things. She had no idea how to do. She'd be like, make a reel, pull things off this website. Um, I want you to take all these things for this client, and I want you to edit them together. Well, what software do you want me to use? That's why I have you. And she's not. Think She's not even paying me. I came to New York to work for free for her, right? Um, and I told the professor who got me that job, um, I said, you should, never, you should never send another student to work for this woman. It's, it was straight exploitive, and it was crazy. Um, but she is, she is the close, I mean, the, yeah, I truly think there's something wrong with her, but. Um, but that's a rare case where it's that obvious, but it's not, I mean, she has a reputation for being like rude, and even I met at a, one of her dinner parties I met one of her former assistants, and they were like, good luck. But they were there in her apartment, though. Still, they had moved up in the ladder in power. Um, I don't know what, what their position was. There was something in Talent Made Act or something like that. But um, uh, Yeah, um, another um, point. What did I want to talk about? Um, do you have any questions about that, what I'm talking about? That will help me. Spontaneously think about what I was thinking. How did you get here? How did you get to Mass? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good question. So I was the uh, the last. Of, <laughs> this is the, so when the when the agent finally um, my my personality just didn't fit with this guy because I was like I realized I felt, I'm very creative, and an agent is essentially you. There's two banks in the business. This is the analogy to think about. It's like a river. One side of the river is the creative people doing creative work. One side is the business, and the agent is in a ferry boat connecting people from bank to bank all day long on a telephone. And you're in an office in front of a computer. I would come in, I'd be, I would be in the office, have to be there by eight, usually by 7.30. He would come in at nine um, and wouldn't leave till 7 p.m. And Fridays we would leave at five. And we, uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh, oh, how I ended up here. Um, but, and <laughs> it was so my personality just didn't quite fit with that. I was like, one thing you need to understand about when someone hires you to do something, they don't want to hear your ideas. Like that lady, she was like, just do it. They, I would get excited and be like, oh. I would read a script and be like, I remember reading the Tupac script. This two, for before it was made, um, it came out awful. And I write the script and I was giving notes and I'd be like, why'd you give up on this thing? And he'd be like, how dare you question me? And all this thing, I'm like, well, I'm just, I thought I was being ambitious. They don't want that. They just want you to do, shut up, do your thing, answer the phone. And it's interesting because you get to hear all this. So you're hearing, you literally have a headset on, you're hearing everything, all these negotiations, the ins and outs. So you learn a lot. Um, so I'm glad I got that experience. I really am. Um, but to give you an example of one thing that was like the last straw for him, I, uh, I, he asked me to make a reservation for him for lunch. Um, he would of, often take lunch meetings with people. We were right by Rodeo Drive, right around the corner, Rodeo Drive on, uh, in Beverly Hills. And uh, he would, and I, and I called to make the reservation, and they said, okay, name, and can we get a cell phone number? And I was thinking, okay. So I gave him a cell, his cell phone number in case something happened with the reservation and he was on his way, they could, you know, it was, um, he got really mad that I gave them his cell phone number. He's like, how dare you give my cell phone number out? I was like, it's a restaurant, man. It's not like, it's like, um, that's true story. True story. 
And so that, and he used that. He was like, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen it. And so I, I remember, and I walked, so I walked out to get some air to defuse the situation. And he wrote that down as, he stormed out of the office. <laughs> and he never told me about it. He acted like it was all fine until, until one morning I came in. And he's like, been replaced. He's like, if you want to stick around, you know, um, and train your replacement, it'd be much appreciated. You know, you don't have to, but I, and I did. I stuck around and I trained the person that was replacing me, thinking maybe he'll help me get a new job. No. No. And that's not uncommon. So, um, every word of that's true. But, um, so how did I, so then I left LA, you know, I was like, you know what? I knew it wasn't for me. I knew in the long run. I was thinking, and it was kind of a blessing. Like, I could have worked that desk for three years and then woken up to it and realized, and that would have been three years gone. Instead, I was like, you know what? Forget this side of the bank. I don't know how I'm going to do it because the whole industry, the structure of that, we can get into it. But I said, I'm going to go make a living with a camera. I wasn't sure how. Started freelancing. And I wound up in Italy and I started getting great clients. Yeah, that's where that footage came from that you guys worked with. Yeah. And, um, made some promos, was making a living doing, just going from businesses, the wall dancers, all that stuff, yeah.